Back again, 24 hours, Jane Beyond, online, all over the world. And you are hearing me. My name is Robert. And um, we are doing this um, Jane Beyond online this year because we all cannot be together. What's very, very sad. So more people are joining us. Um, at the moment, we have eight in the morning in Germany. Um, sun is shining and our sunny Tobias is uh, in the room near to me. So it's really, really online <laughs> because uh, he is also on our team and doing other stuff. So now he's giving a presentation. Um, so Tobias, um, it's your turn. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Um, I'm doing a pr presentation about content security policy and uh, HTTP response headers that you can set in Joomla 4 and, of course, also Joomla 3 to protect your sites um, against uh, different um, uh, security uh, or uh, improve the security on them and on, on, on your sites. Um, let's start with me. Let's see. Oh. Um, I'm uh, Tobias Sulov, uh, from, based in uh, Germany, living next next to Cologne. Um, so where all this live stream is coming from, it's uh, near. Um, I'm personally f uh, in the Joomla community since uh, 2011. Um, and nowadays I'm part of the uh, security team um, and I'm the upcoming uh, 3.10 uh, release lead and being uh, part of the maintenance team um, with, with commit, uh, uh, commit permissions on, on the repo. And this actually is my first Jane Beyond uh, presentation. Um, and it's already a special presentation because it's um, online and not in person. Um, so uh, yeah, or when you want to contact me, I'm, yeah, uh, when, when you want to um, contact me, I'm, uh, or I have a community email address and on GitHub, um, uh, I'm the zero uh, minus 24 um, username. You might have seen that um, when you're around on GitHub or Joomla. Let's start with the uh, topics for the talk. Um, first, I'm going to, to explain what HTTP response headers are and what they can be used for. Um, then I'm talking about HTTP security headers um, um, that uh, can be set. Um, then I'm talking about uh, content security policy um, specifically. And then I'm talking about the, the core tools or the Joomla core tools that we ship with uh, Joomla 4. Um, and then uh, there are some, some links and um, yeah, part time time for questions um, or questions. Okay, then let's start. HTTP response headers. The the idea is that um, your site and or your server sets um, tells the browser um, to uh, add uh, security or um, well in in the beginning um, of the web. Uh, everyone was safe and um, the idea here is um, the browsers evolve but they could not break all the sites by enabling uh, special um, or different handlings uh, in terms of security so uh, for example there are uh, things i'm going to, to mention uh, later um, that could possibly break uh, some valid use cases so um, the, there is a, the concept of um, HTTP response headers that your site and or your service sets and tells the browser, hey, uh, please enable this security protection or please configure um, this security protection to uh, yeah, protect your sites. Um, there's a great tool out there um, about the security headers. It's um, a report, uh, no, no, it's uh, securityheaders.com uh, where you can enter your um, domain and check what headers are set. Um, we are, uh, I'm going to do a um, live uh, demo um, uh, uh, later, so uh, we can check this side too. Um, then about HTTP security headers. Um, for example, there's uh, strict transport security or uh, H 
TST, yes, um, basically allowing uh, the site to tell the browser, hey, please always load my site via HTTPS. So when a user approaches the site for the first time, um, and, um, and, and the header is set, then the browser will uh, redirect them to the HTTPS um, version. And um, don't don't load them um, via uh, HTTP anymore. Um, how to configure, etc. I'm going to show later. The XRAM options um, is a different uh, thing. The XRAM options is about um, telling the browser to not load this specific site as a frame in the another site. So you can uh, protect you against um, click checking uh, things where uh, an evil site loads your login site, for example, and um, as an iframe and with some uh, fancy SSS, even CSS, make it look like it's it's developed a uh, site and uh, so get the, the login details from someone using that thing. Um, the content type options is a, is a um, HTTP header that's also recommended right now uh, in the um, uh, default Joomla, Joomla um, HTTP, uh, HTAccess. Uh, it basically says uh, browsers um, to not try to sniff the, um, the content type. So um, yeah, in, in the beginning, it was um, something useful. Right now, it um, has uh, the problems of some, yeah, basically security problems when you upload things um, and uh, they claim to be an image, but they are not. Um, so when the sniffing is um, bad, um, uh, so usually you just switch that off on normal sites um, or uh, on on up-to-date sites. You don't need that sniffing anymore. A referral policy is uh, when you uh, click a link on your site um, uh, to an external site, usually there is a referral field. And that referral field could leak um, uh, depending on the site. Um, informations um, about the user. So, um, uh, well, some kind of uh, parameters um, in the URL um, that uh, that make you personal identifiable or um, uh, yeah, share some secrets or whatever. So with that header, you can configure um, what is sent when. Um, there's a feature policy there uh, you can um, enable or uh, specify who or what features of the browser, for example, geolocation or the cam, or uh, what origins on your, from your site can actually use them. Um, and there's a pretty one, pretty new one, cross-origin opener policy. It's basically when you hit a link um, on uh, your site and it's open um, another site, then um, with uh, some JavaScript, you can access the original um, the original um, link that's opened. So um, that's something that's used in some small use cases, um, but usually it can uh, be used to attack the original um, site. Uh, and there are pretty more, uh, some, some more, um, and also the content security content security policy I'm coming later to. Um, as of now, Joomla 4.0 has some default headers. So when you install uh, Joomla 4 uh, fresh, um, then we are going to set the XFRAM options. So uh, we are basically stopping uh, everyone uh, from framing your site by default. Um, it's done by a plugin, so basically you can switch it off. Uh, as you see on the screenshot, just uh, uh, disable it here, um, but it will be enabled, uh, or is, is planned to be enabled by default to protect um, new um, 
new sides uh, uh, from that. Uh, the referee policy um, has uh, also some uh, default. So when this side is running on HTTPS and they are opening a link um, on HTTP, um, then there will be no referee right now. Um, and uh, you know the, the refer will be deleted um, or, or not shared with the HTTP side. Uh, but you could also use. You see, it's, it's a drop down. Um, we will look into that later. Um, there you can um, also set uh, some more uh, so some different rules for the cross origin open and policy. Um, it's uh, same origin. So when you open a link to your own side then you still have that connection. When you open a, a, side, a link to another side, then that connection is uh, blocked. Right now, um, only supported in Google Chrome, um, but uh, there will, will be supported in Google Chrome. Um, I think in the, the stable version, it's not uh, right now, but uh, in the developer versions. Um, but uh, it's uh, going to be in the others to what you see here from the plugin um, is the strict transform security policy. Even that we cannot set uh, by default. That makes sense because there are sites that are don't running um, strict uh, that are don't running HTTPS by default, um, and these sites uh, don't need strict transport security. Or when they set strict transport security, um, then they would break because there is no HTTPS version. Uh, but in the live demo, I'm going to show that options that you have there, so you don't have to mess. Um, well, well, the basic concept of that um, plugin um, is that you don't have to mess with uh, some kind of um, HTTP uh, HD access uh, files um, or uh, other stuff um, to to set the headers. And it's uh, having here a new UI where you can. Um, uh, where you can configure them and um, give some extra informations. Um, there are another uh, default headers. Um, in the first one is the uh, X content uh, type options. Op oops, content type options. Um, that's the thing I mentioned uh, earlier uh, about the no sniff um, uh, uh, stuff. Um, it's also default um, when you install uh, 3.9. Um, uh, uh, per, uh, per default, and then we have added for Joomla four, um, so even uh, something new, um, the cross origin resource policy, but it's not enabled by default. It's just chipped with the default um, HD access, um, but it's not enabled. So the cross origin resource policy makes sure that um, for or in in supporting browsers, right? Um, but um, make sure that uh, your resources um, can only be loaded from same origin, so from your own site. Um, details uh, can be found on, on the, the links. Um, right now, it's uh, disabled by default, um, but uh, the, the example is shipped with um, the core HD access file, uh, yeah, core HD access uh, txt. Um, file. And uh, let's talk about content security, content security policy. Basically, um, it, uh, it's, it's a um, thing that allows you to protect your sites against um, different things. Um, for example, HD, XSS. It's basically uh, JavaScript running uh, in uh, your browser context and um, yeah, uh, basically doing bad stuff, clicking stuff that you don't want to click, or um, yeah, executing JavaScript um, that uh, you don't control. Uh, and with content security policy, you have the chance to um, say what scripts, um, for example, what scripts you want to load on your site. Um, uh, example that I uh, found uh, from a German um, News uh, news uh, page is um, with scripts loading in your site uh, by browser extensions. Um, there were some affiliate uh, programs um, uh, attacked or 
your site would have been attacked um, because um, of the browser extensions. They um, well, oh, the, 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 in, with that affiliate programs, there is the last cuckoo wins principle. So when uh, I have an affiliate link for Amazon, for example, on my site, and I've wrote a, a good article, and they clicked on there, they are redirected to um, Amazon. Uh, there they buy it uh, and pay, and then you get uh, some money from them. But uh, the problem here is uh, the last cookie wins uh, principle. Um, so the last cookie that's set um, with that affiliate code is used so um when when uh, someone uh, come to, to your side saw your link uh go over and then saw another um then that last cookie is used so that browser extensions uh in that uh, uh thing loaded some um uh, javascript into your browser so any affiliate uh, link was uh, a rewrote or it they they rewrote um the the last cookie um to their um affiliate uh, code so you as a site owner wrote that a uh, good article about uh, that uh, thing um but the uh, affiliate or the browser extensions um that uh, used that um got got the money so um, that's not a good thing uh, you want on your side. Um, and also um, it allows you to, yeah, th there are some browser extensions out there uh, doing interesting stuff. Let's phrase it this way, uh, loading images uh, over your content or uh, loading, uh, um, yeah, uh, stuff that you don't want on there um, or, uh, yeah. And um, you can all block that uh, with content security policy. Um, there also one thing more: um, XSS, uh, XSS, um, CSS is also not safe. So when you load in, um, uh, you allow everyone um, to to add XSS, uh, CSS to your page, then they can basically um, say body display none and HTML after uh, content, and then say, uh, it just echo an uh, HTTP 500 arrow. So uh, when, um, when when that CSS is loaded, um, your site seems to be offline. And actually it's not, but uh, CSS uh, implies that. So even CSS is not safe, uh, or third-party CSS is, is not safe. Um, so how, how do content security policy approach that? Um, they have a, a whitelist approach. So um, you whitelist the origins that you implemented and you trust um, with different directives. There are a ton of them, uh, just, to men just to mention the, the, um, yeah, the, the top ones. Uh, default source, uh, it's used basically when no, the, the, the a specific source uh, um, is not set. A script source for the JavaScript stuff, style source for CSS stuff, font source for fonts, right? Um, and there's also a special one uh, I want to mention is the report URI. So when there is a violation, um, then um, to that report URI, um, uh, a JSON file is sent, so you can uh, catch that in your monitoring tools. Or I'm going to share later uh, the the scripts I used um, on the sites I implemented it, um, where you can collect them and decide on um, and uh, say, oh, that's a valid use case. I need to whitelist it, or no, that's not a valid use case. Or oh, some kind of different stuff is happening. Um, that's that's the thing uh, I mentioned um, on my GitHub profile. You find uh, a repo called CSP Reporter, um, and there's a basic version, um, just uh, collecting them and sending that to an email, and an uh, extended version uh, depending on your use case and how um, big your site is or how much traffic they get, uh, because um, there are a ton of invalid um, reports you will get um, 
uh, as for the um, for the uh, for things I mentioned because of the browser extensions or your users or uh, even there is uh, um, yeah, there was uh, a hacked um, when you Google ban the reports and then you find uh, what's happening there in the most cases um, and uh, I found for example hacked or uh, signs about hacked um, uh, Mac OS clients um, um, that were accessing um, that that sites. Uh, so you basically blocked that um, attempt at least to to attack the site. Um, so we protected basically our user from um, being uh, yeah from from stuff being injected in our sites. Um, this is how an um, content security policy for the uh, Joomla.de um, site looks like. It's basically going and said, okay, default source is self. Self basically means that your own site, um, uh, from, from your own domain, you can uh, include basically everything because that's the thing you, sh you should trust um, most. And um, then you have a script source uh, there. We say, okay, also self from ourselves, uh, it's okay. Um, and there we have uh, a stats, it's uh, a PIVIC or Maomoto it's called now. Um, then we have unsafe inline right now. Um, that's uh, basically allowing inline JavaScript in this case, uh, because Joomla uh, 3.9 uh, or 3. Uh, that we use uh, still use that uh, in some cases. Um, and then we have um, Google Maps on our site, uh, uh, Google APIs, Google Geostatic, and Google.com for um, a recapture. Uh, then we have a style source that we also have unsafe inline right now. And um, for the fonts, there are also styles loaded. Um, and we have connect source uh, for the stats stuff, uh, frames uh, for the stats stuff, and for the for, for YouTube. And for um, we recapture two uh, fonts uh, again, images uh, for uh, from Joomla Day and Jam Beyond uh, that we load, and again YouTube um, and Google APIs, and then we have that uh, report URI. So that's kind of a, a example how it could look like uh, for an um, yeah not not so small site that we run on uh, Joomla DE. Um, so uh, when you use the report uh, URI um, script I shared e earlier, you could get some kind of uh, this uh, report. Um, and let's look how, how it looks. Um, the, the CSP report, um, that's the that's thing, that's a JSON. Uh, and then the proct URI, this kind of, uh, it's this kind of uh, yeah, a thing uh, that's not so, <laughs> so great, but in this case, um, whatever Chrome in this case is, is blocked. Um, the document URL, so on which page this was, the or original policy in this case, it's a community joomla.org, where it was coming from and what directive they uh, violated. Um, then we have uh, the user agent and uh, style source at violated directives. Um, this kind of is, is interesting because the block domain is Chrome, but Browsers, Firefox, interesting. Um, we have, I have something more. Here is it Safari as browser, and some kind of Opera stuff is blocked. Um, uh, and this is from uh, Joomla DE. Um, here for the Joomla forum uh, in Germany, we have an image and when, and uh, the block domain C. And then when I looked on, on that specific page at the, that day, I saw, yeah, the user is loading uh, from local hosts. So it was never using or never working because only on his, uh, only on his side, um, the, uh, the image was actually there um, and everyone else couldn't see that thing at, at all. Um, yeah. Um, for content security policy, um, we also have you have some some challenges. 
um, the challenge is uh, to get the right things whitelisted that your site still works and make that uh, easy as, as easy as possible. Um, but yeah, it's it's content security policy is not easy, um, so we can enroll it from um, the core level. So we could say, okay, we enable it um, uh, as as a core uh, a core CMS and uh, push it to all users. Um, because all the sites are different. So based on ideas um, from, from David Yardin and um, Nitsia, the in initial code was um, uh, yeah, from Ifopa and me, uh, we built uh, some tools for uh, Joomla 4 and um, I'm going to share it now. So let's see if this works. Mm. Present now a window. Then we share this one. I think I'm the first one to show. I think. Can you see my uh, Joomla 4 backend now, Robert? Okay. Okay. I just just got in. Yes. Um. This this is the the Joomla 4 uh, backend. Um. And there we have uh, under system a point called content security content security policy. Um, we can open it. Um, it's basically a component here yeah, um, with some options. Uh, it works uh, together with um, the plugin I showed earlier. Uh, it's the system HTTP headers plugin. That's that's the screenshot I shared. Um, the the XRAM options, you can enable and disable the referral policy um, where you can configure it's it's dif disabled, so not uh, on there, or there's never a referee here, or when you switch on the, on the same side, there's, um, uh, uh, there's the referee here, or um, some kind of uh, unsafe URL basically uh, added anywhere. Um, on uh, this uh, plugin, we've included some links um, for uh, more details. So um, you can click here and in this case, uh, land to sites that um, explain to you. Uh, there's also a false HTTP header uh, setting where you can uh, go and say, okay, I don't want to use the core tools. I want to to force set or to to explicitly set um, the the rules. Um, all uh, HTTP has that uh, the core uh, sets are uh, in here and um, help you um, or, or allow you to set them and side uh, both uh, for for the client set what uh, page or what what client uh, you want to enforce that. Um, then there is a thing, uh, strict transport security, um, disabled uh, by default, as mentioned earlier. Um, you can enable, enable it. I cannot save it because I don't have, or I can could, could save it, but uh, it would not work <laughs> quite well uh, because I don't have HTTPS on my localhost. But um, he, he, you can configure it, uh, say, okay, you want to enable it, you set the max age time, so how long, um, the, uh, that domain is saved in the browser. So um, it, they remember it and uh, always load it via uh, HTTPS. Um, the default value is, uh, is in seconds and uh, correspond to one year. Um, you can also set it uh, that it's always loaded for subdomains. Um, so uh, when you load uh, Juno.org, and you get uh, the first HTTPS header, and when it's allowed to or set to also load subdomains, um, then uh, community Joomla.org, even when you don't have uh, uh, connected that to that, uh, would be loaded uh, via uh, HTTPS too. Uh, preload preload lists um, is to get even that initial call. Um, um, get even that initial call. Um, uh, we are HTTPS, so you have never visited, uh, for example, Joomla.org, and um, 
then your browser don't let you uh, connect to the HTTP version. Uh, for that, um, you need to add your list, uh, your your um, domain to the, to the preload list, and um, there uh, the, uh, there are some special uh, uh, things. In this case, uh, you have to set at least uh, two years of max max age. Uh, it basically means your site would be broken when, for some reason, you disable HTTPS on the site. So um, yeah, you should be careful. Um, that's the thing that we added uh, here, the, uh, the note explaining, explaining what's happening here. Um, that's what this plugin is about. Um, the version uh, I'm going to share later is, uh, there, there is a, a 3.x version of that specific plugin um, where uh, you can even use most of the things uh, we do in Joomla 4 uh, for Joomla 3 already. Um, let's take a look at the um, uh, other uh, parts of the uh, the content security policy stuff we have in Joomla 4. Um, basically, you have the, the problem in getting the right uh, directives and getting the right settings uh, for them. So what we built was uh, is, is some kind of detect mode. So um, in the beginning, you uh, enable um, uh, the content security policy from the options uh, for com CSP. So when you click here on options, you get to this page. Mm. And here you enable it. Um, and then you say uh, uh, mode to detect. Basically, what we do there is um, setting a, a report only policy so your site is not going to break um, with um, a, a report URI and an endpoint built into CMS where all the violations are sent to and uh, we can save this one so we can check what's happening um, where, where you, that violations are sent to mm. and uh, they are then collected in the backend, and then you can decide, okay, this is uh, is this is okay, and uh, this is a thing that um, I want um, whitelisted on my site, so we can publish that. So uh, the process would be, okay, we have enabled a detect mode. Now uh, we load the site in the front end. In this case, it's um, the default template, and there I know they we load um, Google Fonts. So it's just a basic example. Here you see um, the message from the browsers, uh, from in this case Chrome, uh, report only. So it's still loaded um, and refuse to load the style sheet from Fonts um, because that this is our security policy that we uh, set, um, default source self and a report URI um, to, to our site. And you see there are uh, different uh, ones. Um, now, all that data is sent to our endpoint in the CMS. And when you now go to the uh, ComCSP site, load it, and you see, just filter the site. You see, okay, from this side, we have fonts uh, gstatic.com, fonts gstatic.com, both um, as a font source and Google APIs um, loading uh, uh, styles. So we can now go from here and say publish because they are safe. That's what we implemented. Um, so we say, okay, they uh, they are safe to, to be loaded. Um, and then from our uh, configuration, uh, we go back to automatic mode. Basically what automatic mode uh, uh, does is it takes the settings you have done in ComCSP, all the, the white lists you added to ComCSP, and add that to uh, the uh, content security policy. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to enable it in report only mode right now. Um, there's also a thing called nuns and script hashes and style hashes I'm going to mention uh, later. And that 
frame, X-Frame options also has an um, thing that's uh, implemented in uh, Comp CSP uh, in in the um, on the security policy. And uh, by default, uh, uh, for new headers, it's enabled for our site here too. So let's save that. It's going to replace uh, the, the old 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 stuff. Um, so when it's set, we are content security policy. The old header is um, uh, ignored. So um, we have this one. We have automatic enabled. Now we reload the page. Now we see, yeah, the warning there is. Uh, no, as it, it was delivered via report only mode, but we have not no report or read specific. Um, that's in this case correct. Well, but but we have not uh, got any reports. So well, the site is still uh, loading um, all uh, phones. Um, what headers we have set? We can see in the network tab. If we go there. See content security policy, and that's what um, Joomla just generated. Font source self. We always allow self in this case. Uh, fonts geostatic uh, and style source element self, and a font source Google APIs. Um, frame ensures the self. That's the option I mentioned earlier. And default source self is also um, uh, enabled. That's basically the thing that um, Joomla just generated from this information here and um, with uh, the plugin uh, the settings we have done here, yeah. Um, there's also a custom mode where you can then add, okay, I have not collected them, I want to directly add them um, just for the site or administrator or both or whatever. Um, can uh, add a directive uh, directly script source, example and then you say okay I want to whitelist uh, a different domain or um, uh, stuff so we can um, even that configure them um, uh, here from the UI. Um, the nonce and script hashes and style hashes part is um, Joomla has an API for extension developers to load inline styles and inline JavaScript um, and this is a thing that extension developers need and also use, and that's a to totally why a uh, good use case. Um, but you need to whitelist them. So we have uh, two approaches to that. Uh, the nonce, nonce is basically something that's added to your header, and it's a number used once. That's nonce meaning, and um, to all scripts that have that nonce. Um, they are allowed to use, um, uh, they are allowed to, to execute, executed, and um, uh, that um, means you don't have to, to um, yeah, you, you don't have to, to whitelist them manually, and you can still use inline um, JavaScript and CSS, but uh, they need to have that nonce attribute. Um, when you enable it, the plugin will generate um, on every page load uh, such nonce, uh, pa pass that to the um, renderer that renders um, the, uh, XM, uh, the the um, scripts and uh, the styles uh, passed through uh, the Joomla API and um, make sure they are whitelisted. Um, similar things happen for scripts and uh, style hashes. Um, when you have such inline uh, uh, stuff, you can enable uh, script hashes uh, and style hashes that do a similar thing and um, go through, uh, go, go select uh, uh, the uh, scripts and um, styles that are passed through that API, uh, build a hash on that, and add that hash to the uh, security, to the content security policy header, and um, make sure that they are whitelisted. So um, for for the front end, um, it's uh, crucial that um, all for, for this thing to work, uh, it's uh, important that um, all inline JavaScript and inline CSS is passed through um, the Joomla API. 
um, and added to the header. Um, uh, so, so, so it can be added to the header. Um, okay. okay. Uh, that's that stuff. Okay. So um, then, uh, as mentioned earlier, this is the uh, security headers uh, IO or it now security header dot uh, com site where you can set what this uh, check what's uh, set from uh, your site. Um, I've just choose uh, journal.org and and uh, check them. Uh, there you can see um, X frame options are set to same origin, content type options, etc. Um, and you see what uh, content security policy we used here. Um, in this case, we have a more advanced uh, one with uh, slideshare.net or with tag manager, etc. whitelisted. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a um, thing where we can validate also what uh, kind of headers you set um, and uh, get some uh, documentation for that down here too. Um, let's switch back to the presentation. Uh, when you get reports, um, there's also a, a interesting tool uh, or interesting uh, page. Um, I don't think this worked with your presentation mode. Present uh, window. Now, now you should see GitHub again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's uh, called uh, CSP useful. Or uh, CSP, what the fuck? What the fox? Um, it basically uh, includes um, all kind of reports um, with, yeah, that tries to to explain uh, what it's happening. So when you get reports um, and don't understand what's happening there, uh, just check um, this repo here, and uh, maybe you find an explanation. Um, there are also some uh, not explained. Um, but uh, most of the things are explained and uh, yeah can, can be looked up. Mm. Okay, I've nearly passed my time. Uh, I will add. Uh, um, oh no, no, wait. We end, don't see it. Read and now the window. Again, presentation. So um, here uh, is some, some links uh, to the documentation we've wrote up for the HTTP header management. Um, this is the, the plugin for Joomla 3 um, that's out there right now that you can uh, set the HTTP headers for Joomla 3 too. Uh, when you want to try out what we built in Joomla 4, you can uh, look up the nightly builds. Um, uh, uh, the nightly bits, right? Uh, the security headers side I've mentioned, and the um, CSP uh, useful uh, GitHub repo where you can look up uh, when you get reports you don't understand, or uh, yeah, basically Google them, and then you will land on that uh, report. Mm. And I think uh, uh, maybe there are some questions, um, and yeah. Robert, there are questions. Are there questions, Robert? Um, you're you're finished. Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, no, there are no questions. No questions. Okay. Everybody has understand what you what you are talking about, or probably using it and uh, saying, "Oh my God, this is old stuff." Um, yeah, so, it's yeah. So, that, so yeah. Thank you very much for 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 your presentation about this. Uh, great work. Um, I think we are making now a break a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, see you all in um, almost fifteen minutes back here in this channel 
um, Jane Beyond online 24 hours. And yeah, see you later. <laughs>